right. Hello, hello, Miss Marquez's friends. So we just got off of our Zoom call, and now I am going to do our read aloud for the week. So this book is from our library, like the last one, and it's called Pancakes for Supper. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was a little girl, my mom, sometimes when it was like a surprise, she would make us breakfast for dinner, and it was pancakes, eggs, bacon, and it was always something that I really looked forward to. So when I saw this book, Pancakes for Supper, I was like, hmm, this would be fun to read, and maybe you guys can convince your parents to have pancakes for supper one night. And so this is the front, and it's by Mark Teague, or sorry, it says Ann Isaac, so she wrote the words, she's our um, author. Pancakes for Supper, and then it says illustrated by Mark Teague. So he's the one who drew our pictures. So looking at the book, I wonder what's going to happen because it looks like there's a bunch of animals. Um, she's going to be serving the animals a bunch of pancakes maybe. So that's how we know that this is a fiction book because in real life, this would not happen. A little girl would not go into a forest with a plate full of pancakes and serve it to all of these animals, correct? <laughs> And what I really like about this is on the back of the book, it says Toby's Animal Pancakes. And it has a recipe for these pancakes, but it says, please make sure to have a parent help you. So um, I will upload this recipe when I'm done to Dojo. And maybe you guys could try and make this recipe and send me pictures on portfolios. I would love to see that because I think I might even try to make it because I love this. So, we're going to start reading Pancakes for Supper. Oh, I like this page. It doesn't really say, it doesn't say anything, but it says this book belongs to, and you can write your name. So, everything I do is like mirrored. It's backwards. So, it kind of confuses me. So, if I'm trying to go this way, it's going the wrong way. So, that's why it's like kind of a little goofy. All right. Here we go. Figure this out. Okay. Once upon a morning in a March wood, a solitary wagon splashed along the mud road toward the town of Whispered Creek. And a solitary wagon, solitary means it's alone. It's by itself. So there's nobody else around. It's just this one wagon by itself. Winter was almost gone, but it had left snowy footprints on the land. Mama and Papa guided the horses while Toby sat in the back and made up a song to the rhythm of the bouncing wagon. So here's Mama and Dad. They're the ones driving the wagon. And here's Toby in the back. And you can see she's singing a song. Her mouth is open. So we know one of our characters now, Toby. I've got a sky blue coat with purple lining, a sun yellow sweater with green leaves twining, thick orange mittens with a matching cap, Buck-tied boots to keep out the damp. Fuzzy red long johns and a dress of brown. Brand new clothes for Whisker Creek Town. And that's her singing. She's really singing. She's belting those lyrics out. Her mouth is just like, oh, she is just singing. Suddenly, the wagon hit a big bump and sent Toby flying. And you can see right here in the corner. Her little feet, she is flying in the air. And you can see mom and dad like, whoa. Up she sailed, higher and higher and higher, past squirrels in the branches, past soaring eagles and feathery clouds, until she could no longer see her parents' wagon. Then, just as Toby was wondering if she would ever come down again, she began to fall. So she's even flying higher than the eagle. She flew up in the air so high that she kept going up, up. She was like, when am I going to fall? And now she's finally starting to fall. Down, down, down she tumbled until finally she landed. Sploosh in a deep, soft pile of dew. As she lands, you can see the snow splatter. But right in front of her stood a huge wolf with terrible glaring eyes. The wolf paced around Toby in a circle, closer and closer. Hungry, cried the wolf. So hungry am I. 
I will beat them a child who falls from the sky. Even she was precocious in her temper. Oh, please don't eat me, cried Toby, and I will make you the grandest animal in the forest. And a small girl like you? Ha! What can you do? growled the wolf. I will give you my beautiful blue coat with purple lining. The wolf's eyes gleamed fiercely as it put on Toby's coat and strutted off, calling, Now I'm the grandest beast, west or east. So he was satisfied. He's like, okay, I won't eat you, but I want your jacket. Toby ran as fast as she could, but just as she reached the crest of a hill, she found herself face to face cougar and in, in other words a mountain lion mountain lion is also called a cougar Roar! the cougar roared kicks in the den waiting to eat my kitties would love a girl so oh please don't eat me toby cried as the cougar crouched to spring and i will make you the grandest animal in the forest so the tiger got low and when cats get low that means they're about to attack so he got low, and she was like, no, no, wait, wait. I'll make you the grandest cougar in the forest. A small girl like you? Ha! What can you do? roared the cougar. I will give you my beautiful yellow sweater, said Toby. The cougar gloated triumphantly as he strutted off in Toby's sweater, roaring. Now I'm the grandest beast, west or east. So when he says the cougar gloated, that means he got up and he was like, I'm great. I'm the best there is. So when somebody gloats themselves, that means that they they think really highly of themselves. So now that he put this sweater on, he thinks he's the best thing that ever walked in the forest. Toby shivered without her warm, pokey sweater and peered fearfully into the woods as she ran on. How would she ever find her parents now? In her hurry, Toby didn't notice the furry, white-striped animal crawling through the shadows. But it made a turn, for just then she heard a whispered snarl. Go away, go away, it wanted to say. Go away, go away, or I'll sp 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 spray. Toby backed off as quickly as she could, but the skunk was already waving its tail, aiming straight at her. So you can see her right there. You can see her tail. She got it up and ready to spray Toby. Oh, Toby poking her nose. She's like, no. Oh, please don't spray me, cried Toby. And I will make you the grandest animal in the forest. A small girl like you. What can you do, snarled the skunk. I will give you my beautiful buck hide boot, said Toby. The skunk waddled over to put the boots on its muddy front paws and strutted away whistling. Now I'm the grandest beast, west or east. Toby ran off holding her nose and her purple sweater. A porcupine jumped right in front of her, threatening her with its long, sharp quills. Approach me if you dare, but beware. If you try to pull my hair, beware. You haven't got a prayer if you touch me anywhere, so beware. And porcupines, they look soft sometimes, but when they're up and they're ready to attack, they are like needles. They are pokey. They could hurt you. Oh, don't strike me with your quills, cried Toby, and I will make you the grandest animal in the forest. A small girl like you? Ha! What can you do? I will give you my beautiful brown dress said Toby. A minute later, the porcupine shambled off wearing Toby's dress, bristling with pride and crying, now I'm the grandest beast, west or east. And so she's got this, or the porcupine's got this dress on, but you can still see it's like quills are sticking out of the dress. Now the only clothes Toby had on were her red long johns, her orange mittens, and her hat. She had just sat down to rub her frozen toes when a fierce growl arose behind her. There stood a bear, not as tall as a tree, and drooled hungrily as it said to her, Girl for dinner, crunchy good, 
roasted on a stack of wood? Or should I stew her? Yes, I should. Young but ripe. Ripe enough to eat crunchy fingers, crunchy feet, dipped in honey. Very sweet. Oh, please don't eat me and I will make you the grandest animal in the forest, cried Toby. What can you be, little tasty in stew? I will give you my beautiful orange mitten, said Toby. But the bear only laughed and came closer. What good would that do? I've got four paws, not two. Toby thought a while. You can wear them on your ear, she told the bear. A minute later, the bear slumbered off, wearing Toby's mittens on its ears and thundering, Now I'm the grandest beast, Wes Hoyes. And he looks pretty silly with mittens on his ears. <laughs> Toby hurried off, rubbing her cold fingers, but she hadn't gone far when she heard a tremendous uproar. Oh no, thought Toby, the animals are all coming back to eat me, and she scurried up to the nearest tree. So here we see all of the animals kind of meeting each other. Soon the wolf, cougar, skunk, porcupine, and bear appear, roaring, growling, hissing, howling, yipping, and yowling, and arguing over which of them was the grandest. So they all think they're the grandest. They all think they're the best. The animals grew so hungry that they began to chase each other. All their fine new clothes fell off as they ran. They caught hold of each other's tails and raced around the trunk of a huge maple tree. Soon they were spinning so fast that Toby couldn't tell which animal was which. Round and round the animals whirled, faster and faster until at last they melted into a great golden brown puddle at the base of the so here they're spinning and spinning around that tree because they're chasing each other and they get so tired that apparently they kind of just melt right down the tree. You can see Toby in the trees just watching them. As soon as she was sure the animals were gone for good, Toby ran to cut her clothes off. Then she heard her mother and father calling her and caught sight of their wagon through the trees. Everyone shouted joyfully as Toby ran off to meet them. So I bet she's never been more excited and happy to see her little friend. While Toby told them of her adventures, the sun rose high and warmed the trunk of the maple tree where the animals had disappeared. The tree began to stir with life after its long winter sleep and soaked up the golden brown puddle from root to branch. A woodpecker tapped holes in the bark and sweet maple syrup began to trickle down. Pancakes for supper, shouted Toby, and she held a shiny tin bucket to collect the syrup. We'll have the grandest feast, west or east, said Papa, and he built a fire in a pan while Mama mixed batter in a bowl. So here Toby is getting the maple syrup with that bucket from the tree, and then Mama's mixing the batter, and Papa's starting the fire. Mama fried pancakes as golden as the fur on a cougar, while the hot maple syrup Toby poured over them was as glossy brown as the hair of a pig. But not one single pancake was as tough as a wolf, prickly as a porcupine, or smelly as a skunk. Papa ate 27 pancakes, and Mama ate 55, but Toby ate 169 because she was so hungry. Well, you're the bravest girl in the world, said Mama and Papa together. And look at that stack of pancakes right here. It goes all the way off the page because she ate 155, or sorry, 169. That's so many pancakes. How hungry was she? And Toby drove the horses all the way to Whisker. So that is why this story is called Pancakes for Supper. She actually, I thought she was going to go and give all of these animals pancakes, but she actually didn't. It was just her family that ended up eating the pancakes. And what saved her through this story was her trying to give her clothes to all of these animals and telling them a little fib saying, oh, but if you wear this jacket, you'll be the grandest in the forest. So that's kind of what helped save her life, right? This was a good book. I liked it. So what I want you to do for your question, for your questions and I've had a couple of you um, send me videos of you answering the questions. I've had a couple of you getting onto the JoJo portfolios and writing out your answers. 
Some of you have even written on a piece of paper. I had sacred last week. She made the Venn diagram. She had her mom make the Venn diagram for her and she wrote all the words. So everything that you guys are doing is awesome. And I love seeing your work. So whether you're telling me facts or you're writing them down, taking a picture of your paper that you wrote your facts on, whatever works for you is how I want you to um, answer the question. So as always, what I like to do at the end of a story, main character, who is the main character? Now we were introduced to many characters, correct? But who is the main one? Okay. Um, where does the setting take place? That's a pretty easy one. And instead of doing beginning, middle, and end, this book did have a problem and there was a solution. So kind of like what we did last week where you tell me what the problem is. So what was the problem in this book? And then how was the problem solved? Okay. So main character, setting, problem, solution, just four things that I need you to do. And you can choose how you want to answer those questions, um, but just sub submit your answers on the Dojo portfolio so that I can check your work and see your work. Okay. Um, I will post this um, recipe later today just for fun. If you want to do it, it's something to do. We, we, have, we don't have a lot of stuff to do anyway, so why not make some pancakes for dinner? And if you do make pancakes for dinner, and it doesn't have to be tonight, you guys can bake it whenever you want. And when your parents go to the grocery store to get the ingredients, send me pictures of your pancakes. I would love to see it. I hope you guys have a great week. Can't wait for show and tell on Tuesday. And I can't wait to see your faces. I hope you guys have a good day. I love you all. Talk to you later. Bye.